Peace to the gods, peace to the earths, and all of the righteous families of the planet. Our bees, the god, day, sun, supreme, solar, magnetic, god, Allah, a.k.a. Brother Fahim Kalikwa Hajj, back again with the family with a breakdown of our universal flag of the 5% nation. Um... First, we see on our flag, well, first of all, this flag was uh, created and drawn up for us by Universal Sham God in the year 1967 AD, you know, in New York, you know, Brooklyn, New York, which uh, Sham God was one of the Brooklyn gods, Medina gods, you know, back then, um, I, be, I believe it was like 13 or 14 different firstborns, you know, in Medina, who the father um, first civilized, you know, when he, uh, his teachings made, you know, way out in that area. Um, Medina gods was like known as the warrior gods, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But Universal Sham God was a young teenage brother who, you know, was an artist and he, you know, would draw up stuff and whatnot and, um, he presented the father with several different flags, but out of all of them, the father chose this particular flag, you know, which um, we're going to build on today. Um, prior to Universal Sham God drawing this flag up for the father, um, the five percenters was actually using the same flag that the Nation of Islam uses today, you know, which in the Nation of Islam, it's referred to as the national. But um, the five percenters was basically using that flag, you know, to represent themselves. You know, they had the flag of the five percent nation. I'm sorry, they had the flag of the Nation of Islam and they had the names pretty much, uh, of the brothers in, in the nation of Islam, you know, Akbar and Bilal and, you know, they had those type of, you know, uh, names, Muslim God names, basically. I say Muslim God names because they were the 99 or they are the 99 attributes of Allah, most glorified and exalted. But brothers would, you know, use them to represent themselves. But during the year 1967, you know, just with a lot of backlash and stuff that was going on with, you know, uh, some of the youth in the streets of New York City, you know, gang violence, gang activities, dudes getting, you know, stabbed, dudes getting shot, dudes getting locked up, you know, charged for drugs, selling heroin. Heroin was, heroin was big on the streets at this time, you know, brothers was getting in trouble. So the father said, you know what, you know, um, I believe it was Captain Joseph uh, and, uh, brother Clarence, um, Clarence seven X from, uh, Muhammad's mosque or Muhammad's temple number seven in New York city, you know, eventually stepped to the father and was like, yo, you know, brothers is, you know, getting bagged up for stupid stuff and da, 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 da. And it's really shining a bad light on us. And the father knew that first of all, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the father held the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in high regards as a holy messenger of Allah. You know, the father never had no problem with uh, the messenger. So just out of respect and admiration for Elijah, the father basically, you know, one of the statements that was given to us by Universal Sham, that was uh, uh, related to us by Universal Sham God, the father, you know, got brothers and sisters together one day and he basically, in, in so many words, uh, Universal Sham God says, the father said, brothers and sisters, this is one of the reasons uh, we, we're going to take away the Muslim names so that the Muslims in the nation of Islam don't have to take the weight for the unrighteous actions of our fruit. You know, he said, um, he taught us that the Muslim is only one who submits to the will of Allah. So by nature, we are all Muslims. This is the father. He said, by nature, we are all Muslims and that it is hard enough being a righteous Muslim in hell without a bunch of knuckleheads running around on the warpath causing confusion. So 
in the year 1967, a big change pretty much happened with the 5%, you know, uh, Nation of Islam. Um, they got their names changed, and now they had their own flag to represent their nation. So as we look at the universal flag of the 5%, as we first see that, you know, um, uh, we have eight points we notice around the outer part of the flag. I'm going to just use this little little thing I made. But these eight points going around, basically, those eight points basically represent our eight lessons that the Father gave us, um, which is the supreme mathematics, the supreme alphabets, uh, student enrollment, our English C1, English lesson C1, the lost found Muslim lesson number one, the lost found Muslim lesson number two, the actual facts, and the solar facts. Um, some gods uh, have added or put, you know, they. I've heard variations with the eight lessons because some gods, like the way I got it actually, when I first got knowledge of self, my enlightenment gave me the eight lessons were the supreme mathematics, the supreme alphabets, the 12 jewels of Islam, then the student enrollment or the one to 10, the English C, the uh, English lesson C1, the one to 36, the lost found Muslim lesson number one, the one to 14, the lost found Muslim lesson number two, the one to 40, and then actual facts and solar facts both pretty much together, you know, because they're short, you know, uh, uh, short degrees, both of them. So within the eight points, as we can see on our flag, there's shades, there's black and, you know, there's two different shades in them. You got a black and then you got a gold shade. I know probably on mine it looks yellow, but it's supposed to actually be gold. Um, Within the eight points, there are 16 shades that represent the 16 shades of the original people of the planet Earth. Our people range from the darkest of the dark to the lightest of the light. Damn near white. You know, this is the different colors of original people on our planet. So now when we do the math, we see uh, eight, the eight points. Uh, and then we see 16 different shades within the points. So 8 plus 16 gives us 24, doing the math. We have an elite group of men referred to by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad as the 24 scientists of universal history. In the Bible, they are called the 24 elders, and in the Holy Quran, they are known as the Exalted Assembly. There are 24 in all, but only 23 actually do the writing of world history every 25,000 years. The 24th sits over the 23 as a judge of what is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the 24th sits over the 23 and judges what is written. We write our history or Quran to equal our home circumference of the planet Earth, which is 24,896 square miles, approximately 25,000 miles. So in the center now, let's get to this big guy right here. We see a seven. Now, the seven, if we notice, is big, it's black, and it's bold. And it sits at the direct center of everything. It represents the supreme being intelligence of the universal family, the Asiatic black man. As the physical earth has seven continents and seven areas of power, so does the supreme being black man have seven major circuits in the human brain and seven chakras, uh, 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 seven chakras power points, which is controlled by his seven and a half ounce of original brain cell. The sun is not in the center 
of our solar system because it rotates around the supreme god force, which is the Black Seven. So that seven represents the Asiatic black man, the god. In the Nation of Islam flag, you don't really see the the, uh, uh, seven. There's no seven there. We just see a star and a crescent, moon, which I would definitely encourage all five percenters to get the messenger's book, um, The Flag of Islam. Because in there, the messenger pretty much breaks down, you know, uh, the star, the crescent. Basically, what this flag represents is just this flag is an add-on because it has more stuff to it. We see that the moon is at a half crescent, if we notice. See, she's a half crescent moon. And it's to the right. It's on the right side, meaning it's in the first quarter or cycle of a new era in development. The moon and the earth came from one source and represent the Asiatic black woman who hides and keeps her modesty behind the veil of the black God. Her two points represent her wisdom. Point right there, and then another point right there. It represents her wisdom. The star, now, this little guy over here, the star represents the Asiatic black child or black nation who is born into existence and completes the universal understanding or the universal family. The child doesn't stand over the seven. He must stand under in order to be nourished by the wisdom of the mother. This ultimately grows the child into a master, just like the seven. He is born with an innate ability to become the sole controller of the universal family. His destiny relies on the potential of the wisdom and the movements of her water. The five points of the star represents the God's characteristics deep within its nature from birth. So we see arm, leg, leg, arm, supreme intelligent head. The star has that. It has those five points, arm, leg, leg, arm, and supreme intelligent head. We see the baby in making, the baby nation growing. The five points can also mean the five pillars of Islam or justice according to the 12 jewels or, our, you know, our 12 jewels of Islam. The three colors that we see, you know, in our flag, you know, we have black and then we have gold and then there's white. The black stands for the natural essence of the universe and its original people who are of the universe, who come from the universe, who were born out of the universe, better known as the original nation. The white stands for the powerful reflection of supreme light given off by the moon from the son of man. And the goal stands for the knowledge of one's self and the glow of supreme intelligence given off by one who has divine understanding and who has discipline. Goal is our halo of bright rays of divine truth, freedom, and happiness. So in this flag, as we see, you know, the three colors, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and we see all of the other things in it, you know, I know some gods, you know, when I got knowledge of self, we get into a little bickering contests and, you know, it would just be a lot of just, just foolishness. Like I remember, you know, uh, well, how many points does the flag got all together? You know, I remember getting into silly arguments. Dudes would be like, look, this is one point right here. That's one, two, that's another point, three, that's another point, four, that's another point, five, six. And guards were just like, yo, there's there's like 27 points. There's like, there, there's 57 points. So there's, you know, just like, <laughs> there's so many, you know, frivolous debates and, and conversations. Some guards talk about the, the the moon being over the seven, and 
Oh, the father didn't have it that way. Oh, well, on the school, it is that way. And, all, you know, a lot of these bickering contests are really, you know, irrelevant, basically, you know, because it takes away from what the flag truly represents. The flag, the flag represents unity. And any God who studies these 120 lessons, basically anything that bears the sun, the moon, the stars, is our flag. That's our universal flag. You know, it belongs to every God, every Muslim God or every black Muslim, you know, out there. You know, anyone professing knowledge of self, this flag is yours. So this was just a little short breakdown um, family, just for the newborns, just to get an idea of what our universal flag is and what it represents. Um, there's a lot more that I could have went into, and I'll probably do a more extensive uh, bill later on, inshallah. But this is the universal flag of the 5% nation, or the 5% nation of Islam, or Allah's 5% nation of Islam. And it came into existence in the year 1967. So with that being said, I hope the family got something out of this bill. And I want to say peace to the gods and peace to the earths. We are a nation of gods and earths, the 5% nation of Islam. With that being said, family, I'll leave you as I came in the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Peace to the gods, peace to the earth.